all morning long, back and forth. We've seen tanker trucks coming in and out of the area. This car flew off the 99, crashed through two fences, up this embankment, landed upside down right here in the Beardsley Canal. I was here right in this spot last year on Black Friday. It was a zoo. Kind of felt like the Incredible Hulk was on one side, like pushing it over. There's definitely some rocking going on. I might not tell him about that, John. <laughs> what he doesn't know, yeah. he, he really did. He told the turkey totally mounted my leg. And the so only thing I mind about snails is them sticking to the bottom of my shoes. Yeah. You know, can we just cancel this live shot? Because I'm kind of feeling full. I don't know if I can do this right now. <laughs> Fire truck, ambulance, police car, even a Caltrans truck pulled over on the side of the highway with the lights flashing. It's just dry sand. The reason being, the Kern River really hasn't seen water flowing through it in Bakersfield. These units are entirely made out of wood. Now, this is a piece of the siding. You can see we're right in front of the unit where the fire started. A football field's length of burning rubber, miles of black smoke, no water in sight, and a fire burning so hot that Kern County firefighters had no choice but to let the tire wear out itself. When tires burn, um, especially this large amount, the rubber gets going. It doesn't start easy, but once it does get going, it really burns intensely and a lot of heat comes off of it. A remote area surrounded by nothing but cornfields and orchards. Firefighters had no water source and were forced to shuttle in water on tanks from a hydrant three miles away. Half the tires were bulldozed out of the way. The other half were left to burn. Firefighters it was like fighting a bonfire with a bottle of water. Water! But because the fire was so intense um, and our water supply and the demand that we needed, we weren't able to extinguish it. Plug in, stand up straight, and hold on. This year, the Kern County Fair is sure to be a... Why not start with a ride on the Dragon Wagon, straight from Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch. Butler Newsmas has a great carnival, and he had the fortuitous opportunity to pick up a couple of rides from Neverland. And if you're looking for a little altitude, why not try out the Balloon Samba, another one of MJ's relics. There's a lot of Michael Jackson fans, and just having something that was a part of Neverland here is going to be a big attraction for the community. Of course, if you've outgrown the Kitty Carnival and are ready for a ride in the big leagues, say goodbye to Neverland and hello to the Zipper. Intense action, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't eat that corn dog before you go on the ride. Can't believe I'm going to do this. Open up! Wow. And nothing will unzip, I mean undo you, like some good old-fashioned thrills. You get uh, scared to death and, uh, you know, it feels like you're going to die, but you're not. <laughs> when it's in my throat, that's when I know it's good. Boy, come on, boy, <laughs> An early morning murder. Neighbors in shock. All of a sudden, just shots ran out. There must have been eight to nine, maybe even ten shots. Just bam, 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 right after one, right after the other one. And we just all got scared and just got down on the floor, actually. Shortly before three this morning, somebody fired shots at this station wagon. Then at the end of the cul-de-sac, they located a vehicle running. Police say 45-year-old Joe Lewis Wooten Jr. of Bakersfield was shot dead behind the wheel. He was our friend. <laughs> we just can't believe that this happened to him. I mean, him? It's, it's crazy. Close friends of Wooten say they were with him last night at their home, just blocks away from the murder scene. Did you see Joe last night? Yeah, we, yeah, we talked to him. Like 11.30. 11.30. Him and my sister, they're together. The women say they don't know why anyone would want to hurt him. Don't bother nobody. He's a good person. He tries to help everybody. <laughs> Police don't either. They have no information on the shooter or the motive. But court records show Wooten had multiple convictions for drug-related and other charges and has served time in state prison. Kate Larson, Eyewitness News.
Yeah, you know, the live trucks, they have the big pole that goes into the air. That's how we get a signal and bring you the live television picture. Uh, but our initial concern when we were driving, and like I said, our truck literally rocking back and forth across the lanes on the I-5. We didn't know if we were going to get it up. Fortunately, we were able to put it up just a little bit, and we were able to get a signal with, uh, you know, it goes up a lot higher than that. So we lucked out here uh, this morning. But the doors, they swing open on the front of the van. The first time we opened, they swung open, and they just, like, crashed into the side of the truck. And then we couldn't even get them open because the wind was, like, holding them shut. So uh, it's been interesting for uh, my photographer and I out here this morning. I can tell he's having a hard time even standing up right now. Kate, for us watching back here, this looks like it's the worst conditions we've seen you in all week. Is that, is that, would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely, John. Obviously, we were talking about strong winds on Monday and Tuesday, and, and that was nothing compared to this. In fact, this is some of the stormiest, definitely the windiest conditions I've ever witnessed, been a part of in Kern County. Uh, this is serious stuff. You can see the water. It's just a puddle, but it's making it look like these, it's like white water in this puddle along the gas station and the trees and the bushes. They're going wild, and uh, nobody stopped by. I did speak to one trucker a few minutes ago who was heading south, and he's definitely nervous because in those big, top-heavy trucks, it can be tricky. And this is what a healthy orange is supposed to look like, juice coming off of the fruit like that. I've been told that when the citrus freezes, when it gets too cold, nothing runs off. It's kind of like a slushy. The cells dry up, and it's a little bit like straw, not something you would want to eat. And it can be very, very dangerous when the temperatures dip into the 20s for a prolonged period of time. Now, fortunately, it's still freezing, but in the 30s and growers have taken a lot of precautions, like for example, in this grove, they have been running the drips all morning long. You can see puddles behind me. It seems counterintuitive, but the water is actually a lot warmer than the air temperatures, and the steam rising on it warms the fruit. Now, I do want to prove to you that it's cold out here. If you look at the bottom of the tree, there's an orange and leaves covered with icicles. And right now, CHP is sort of just controlling traffic through this intersection. No roads are closed, though. Live from Delano, I'm Kate Larson. John, back to you. Hey, Kate, do we know how the other driver is doing? You know, I haven't gotten official word from the CHP, but a Kern County firefighter told me that he actually, he believes that the driver of that truck declined any medical aid, so he may have walked away from this accident unscathed, which is actually pretty remarkable considering the damage of this truck. I mean, you can see the back of the white pickup truck, the one where the driver uh, supposedly did not sustain any injuries, is completely crushed and torn apart, um, and there is just oil all over the roads, which Caltrans, is, they're also out here working to sort of clean up this mesh and uh, get the roads back safer. But bottom line, if you're traveling north up in northern parts of Kern County, please be careful on the roads. It is seriously foggy. Kate, the information we have is that the intersection there, 43 and Pond Road, is closed. Is that, in fact, the case? No, 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 it is not closed. The CHP and Caltrans, though, are working. You can see they've got flares and cones out here, and they're sort of directing traffic. But I have seen big rig after big rig pull through this intersection, which is clearly what happened when these two collided. We've also got Kern County fire uh, farther north on 43 right there. So they're just, it's, it's a little bit slower through here, but the roads are open.